Okay, this one is about relative humidity. Relative humidity is the amount of water as a vapor in the air compared to the amount it can hold. There's, there's spaces between the air molecules. Now, when we talk about air, obviously air is not made up of one thing, but we're just going to call it uh, a molecule. And but in the spaces between these molecules can absorb water. The less water that's in the air, the lower the percentage of relative humidity. Like if I had 50% relative humidity, I would have 50% of the water that the air can hold. Now the one other thing that's put into this is temperature. The higher the temperature of the air, the more water it can absorb. So relative humidity has to be at a certain temperature. So if it's if I take a thermometer and I put it outside and it's 75 degrees and I put a uh, a humidity gauge out there, it will read the humidity at that temperature. Okay, now you may be wondering why I'm showing you a picture of a sponge. Okay, this is kind of an analogy for this. Okay, the sponge has no water in it. It's dry. That would be 0% relative humidity. Now, if I put water into it, then the water is going to start filling that sponge and taking up the space that's not occupied by air molecules. And the sponge portion of this is an analogy to air. So if there was a block of air like that, there's all these spaces that it can absorb moisture. If it's half full to what it can absorb, it's 50%. Okay, now if it's 50% at say 70 degrees, it's not going to be 50% at 30 degrees. It's going to be higher. And at some point you're going to reach what we call the dew point. Say I got my 50% relative humidity at 70 degrees, and I start dropping the temperature and say I get it to 30 degrees. The uh, dew point is going to be reached because as that temperature drops, the humidity rises because there's not as much space between the molecules. As it gets colder, the molecules get closer together, not as much space for water. So let's fill a silly thing full of water. Okay. Now here I got this dirty sponge. Wow. Uh, I've got this sponge and I have filled it full of water. Now this would be representing 100% relative humidity. Now, 70 degrees, 100% relative humidity. If I lower the temperature, that's going to make the sponge, which is the air, smaller. The space between the molecules is going to get smaller. So the way I can uh, imitate what happens to air is by squeezing the sponge. Now when I squeeze the sponge, water comes out. It's exactly the same thing 
that happens to moisture in the air. Essentially, as I drop the temperature, the molecules get closer together and they squeeze the water out. In this case, soap too. Okay, that is really all there is to it. Relative humidity must be related to temperature. That's why you have condensate and air conditioners. We have brought the temperature down across a, an air conditioning coil, and as I've dropped it down, then I reach the dew point at some plate at some point, and water condenses out of the air. That's what happens in rain. Let's say a high temperature area. Uh, meets a low temperature area. Okay, the high temperature area has more moisture in it, more volume of moisture than the low pressure area. When the low and the high get together, the low cools off the high and the air reaches the dew point and it rains. Same thing that happens at night, dew on the grass. Temperature dropped down, reached 100% humidity, and the water is wrung out of the air. I hope this thing makes sense. It's an analogy. I think it works pretty good. Let me know if you think otherwise.